the UN Gallup uh, invited, kindly invited me to this forum. He asked me to, to address the role of the European Union uh, in the region and the role in building a new security architecture. And he gave me eight minutes. Uh, we are all used to go to conferences, and we are all worried by the time limit, because we think uh, it's impossible to say something relevant in eight minutes. But this time, my worry was the opposite. I asked myself, uh, how can I speak so long for eight minutes on the role of Europe uh, in building a uh, <laughs> security infrastructure? And, and my worries were confirmed yesterday at the closed door session, where our great moderator, Nahem, uh, suggested to allocate time uh, in addressing the big re external regional power. And he said something, um, I may be wrong. We can give half an hour to the United States, uh, 20 minutes or something like that to Russia, one minute to China. And then someone said, uh, we forgot Europe. And he said, OK, no problem. We can give the same time as for China, provided we speak about either France or Great Britain. And uh, 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 someone may think that I use these preliminary words to use some of the eight minutes, in a sense, uh, which is true. Uh, but I believe uh, that this can also work to set the tone of our com on the comments I will make. For decades, as Gallup said, for many years, European leaders have believed the bloc could play uh, in foreign policy a, a transformative role. Uh, a transformation was the key word. First, after the Second World War, transformation was applied in changing the relationship in Europe between Germany and France. Then, through the accession of other countries, in transforming former dictatorship like Greece, Spain, and Portugal. Then, with the enlargement in transforming former communist countries in Eastern Europe, and eventually, and this is where you mentioned, what we mentioned before, Gallip, through the new the, the neighborhood policies in transforming the southern shore and the eastern border of Europe. Uh, for some times, transformation has worked pretty well. But then, a lot of crises altogether, the Euro crisis, the Ukrainian crisis in the eastern part, the uphill in the Middle East, the migrant crisis, have transformed Europe, uh, transformed the Europe of transformation. A Europe which is now increasingly divided internally, a Europe which is now facing uh, more exit, such as Brexit, more than accession or new accession which is now debating a two-speed Europe which would formalize the split between those countries who have been transformed and are willing to further transform, transform themselves uh, and the rest. This is why, and I get to this, your second question, Gary, this is why uh, with the more realistic approach, uh, the word transfor transformation has been substituted by the word stabilization in the new global strategy of Europe released last year. And stressing stabilization as opposed to transformation has the implicit meaning that democracy, values, and freedom, the old recipe, are not enough for stabilization. And stabilization has to come before democracy. But the issue facing Europe in this new strategy is how to promote stabilization. OK, stabilization is the key word, is the key strategy, but how do you promote that? Because stabilization means uh, security, first of all. And Europe is not equipped, not willing to work in that field. Means Stabilization means good governance, governance and social reforms, which is difficult. And sometimes it is even hard to identify with whom promote good governance, take Libya, three, four government. And stabilization means uh, improve trade and growth in the region. But trade, improving trade or having fair trade is a little bit difficult in a time in which free trade is under discussion all over the world. And promoting growth is rather difficult and is uh, 
it's actually challenged our capability to promote growth is challenged within Europe by many countries which are not growing at all. This is why the how uh, is pretty vague in the EU global strategy. So were we right in yesterday's session in giving Europe roles uh, some so little time, one minute, uh, the same time we gave to China? Uh, yes, if we think at security, in terms of boots on the ground, arms, intelligence, peace enforcement. But the question is, the first question on this is, are we sure, is the region, are regional actor aiming to get this external security, this type of security from external powers? And the second question, which was actually raised by Naim and Fala in their intervention, is this security, military security, the only security the region is interested in? Uh, Fala mentioned there is social security, there is water security, there are uh, 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 other se food security. And Botus Ghali used to say 20 years ago, Yes, there is no growth without peace, but also there is no sustainable peace, lasting peace, without inclusive growth, inc without the other security which were mentioned. If and when some security arrangements uh, will be in place in the region, Europe can be the best, if not the only, supplier of the other securities supplier of humanitarian assistance, supplier of aid, money for reconstruction, which is bloody needed in countries like Syria, Libya, and others, advice in state building. It is already one of the most important suppliers in this field, with uh, uh, Europe and European countries uh, uh, paying 55% of the total aid to the region, and with five countries in the region being among the top 10 uh, recipient of humanitarian aid from Europe. So going back to my words at the beginning, the one I used to, to waste the eight minutes uh, since uh, I had not many topics on Europe role, uh, going back to the original doubt and worry I had, I think 30 minutes like for Russia and United States uh, to military power on Europe would probably be too much, but Euro role in everything but military may deserve uh, more than one minute, at least the eight minutes you gave me. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Paolo. Uh